Asian markets are showing solid gains, kicking off a fresh week as traders cheer the Fed's dovish signal. Good morning. Welcome to Bazaar Morning Call. I'm Lata and with me is Sonia and Anuj. So full house here to greet what's going to be a very green screen. It's almost a Goldilocks scenario, uh, especially for the U.S. economy. But actually, we're getting good news from the largest economy and the second largest economy of the world. Uh, well, uh, the second largest economy, China, of course, cut its CRR, what they call RRR, uh, on uh, Friday after market hours, after our market hours. But uh, the good news from the U.S. economy is even more important. Uh, you had a 312,000 number of jobs created against expectations of 176,000. And as if that were not enough, uh, that the economy is going strong, you had the Fed, uh, U.S. Federal Reserve chairman saying that uh, they are going to watch the economy very closely, that there is no preset path. And he said this when he was asked about balance sheet contraction. Will they go on autopilot? And he said, no, there is no preset path for policy. As well, uh, on the economy, he said, since inflation is uh, uh, benign, we will watch to see how the economy evolves. So extremely dovish statements coming. Uh, from US as well. Well, Lata, morning, Anuj, morning. Uh, so does does that put to rest the fears of, you know, the worries of a growth slowdown, the worries of the trade war impacting the US? Does this one data point put all those fears to rest? This is a lagged data yeah. point. So, uh, you know, in the forward-looking data point, there are still worries that last year there were tax cuts and next year there won't be tax cuts. Uh, but just a word more on what all this means for India. Uh, we've also seen a rise in crude prices, primarily because of, you know, other factors being positive. The U.S., uh, the Chinese CRR cut and the expectation that that economy will be stimulated has brought crude closer to, you know, $58. Uh, that's almost a 5% climb that we saw in crude last week. And uh, in India itself, every rising data point is indicating that the government is making less money. I mean, the GST collections, now there is a further talk of a GST composition uh, level being increased. That could mean a little more money going away. And more important, we were getting buzz yesterday, and I think it will be clarified today, that even direct tax collections are likely to slow down. So the Indian bond markets definitely have a problem. All this is before even a, a farm package is announced. Mm -hmm. If that also happens, they have a problem. But uh, equity markets may not worry about those high yields just yet. Okay, well, the other big cue this week is that earnings season kicks off. And we have uh, on the 9th of January, it starts with Indescent Bank, followed by TCS on the 10th, Infosys on the 11th. And then you have, you know, other names like Z Entertainment, etc. After the subdued last quarter, let's see what this quarter throws up in terms of earnings. But Anuj, morning, uh, w what should be the, mm, the course of action today? Uh, you know, you did mention on Friday, I mean, I wasn't here, but yeah. you, did, you did mention, I heard that, uh, you know, one should sort of take a... a, a a positive stance and maybe you'll make money um, given that we have so many positive cues yeah. today you think that uh, you expect to see a follow-up morning Sonia. you know uh, first thing first and market has given enough indications now that this is not a market in which you want to change your positioning too much intraday because if you do that you know the market will take you to cleaners this is the market in which you basically respect the risk reward like we said on friday i think on friday uh, lata would remember this we were making this point that the market is due for a hundred point rally i think half of that played out and the uh, rest would play out today so again the market respected the risk reward friday low of 10628 has now confirmed a higher low for the nifty the previous lows were 10,333 and 10,550 which were well documented the days when the market really turned i think 10,628 now uh, clearly uh, proves that now the question is for those compulsive traders what next i mean you should have been long on this market since friday but if you were not uh, for those who who were long i think you should carry long till the time the market shows you any kind of fatigue uh, there were a lot of shorts which came in the system between 130 to 230 dip you don't want to relieve them unnecessarily. You want to see how you're, especially if you got long when the market gave you that dip, and if you bought there, you want to see how that goes. The market gives an indication that perhaps uh, that rally has played out. Then you get out. Otherwise, you know, you perhaps stay with that. Do you chase this gap up? Uh, that's a tough one. If you do, you will have to keep a strict 30, 40 point step, uh, stop loss. But you know, more you buy, you know, on dips, the the better your risk reward. Uh, the big question again is, are there enough triggers to cross 10,950 once again? Perhaps on that, uh, the way IT is falling, 
that may not be, uh, you know, uh, Reliance also perhaps not doing as much. So that perhaps may not be the case. So if Reliance doesn't perform, IT doesn't perform, mm -hmm. uh, what about banks? Because the Nifty Bank, I was looking at it mm -hmm. from the lows of 24,000 in October. It's now already crossed 27,000. Mm -hmm. You think it could provide leadership? Yes, and again, you know, Sonia, remember we were talking about it on the result day that perhaps time has come to move money from exporters to domestic stocks. Uh, and that, I think that trade is well and truly on. Even this month, the Nifty IT is down 2%. And the bank nifty is actually up about 0.1%. Uh, also, the, the bank nifty loan Friday was right at the 20-day moving average. Uh, 26,926, the 20 DM is 26,918. The bank nifty has a shot today at taking out the recent high of 27,500. And if you close about 27,500, it opens the probability of the bank nifty going to all-time high at some point in January itself. Uh, uh, now, I know that's a tough ask, but the way ICICI Bank Access Bank and even Yes Bank have started to perform. I think it now needs a bit of a push from HDFC Bank, and you could you could have that. Uh, Nifty IT is clearly struggling. It's sort of struggling around the 20 and 200 day moving average. There might be some bit of juice in Nifty IT as we move closer to earnings season because you know there's large expectation of uh, mm. dividend or buyback from Infosys. TCS normally doesn't disappoint, but that would be backward looking number. So perhaps uh, the bigger trade is in the banks, in the domestic cyclicals. Uh, and of course, in the uh, you know infra uh, kind of stocks, not perhaps in the IT or pharma names now. Okay, All right. I'm even very sure of infra kind of stocks. They would yeah. be a little interest rate sensitive. But I take your point about IT uh, because it, look at the way the dollar has crashed. Mm -hmm. I mean, from 97 plus today, we are very close to 96 on the dollar index. So we are going to see some strength rubbing yeah. off on the rupee. All right. For now, the SGX Nifty is indicating that the start will be well and truly in the green, more than a hundred point gain. But let's take a look now at what our wise experts have to say as we head into trade this Monday morning. Timothy Moore of Goldman Sachs says the Nifty six-month reported earnings are tracking only 42% of the full year FY19 consensus estimates, which suggests a downside risk to consensus estimates. He says with lofty estimates and poor tracking so far, they expect further EPS downgrades to come in. He expects earnings growth to remain weak in the current quarter, given the soft activity in recent months. So for Q3, he says positive surprise candidates include Reliance Industries, Emphasis, TCS, Infosys, HCL Tech and l &T. And negative surprise candidates include Hero Motor Corp and HPCL. He retains India at market weight with a nifty target of 11,700 by December 2019. Okay, <coughs> that's uh, not a very positive uh, view on earnings. Uh, yeah, Q3 earnings could struggle perhaps, but we will get to know within, before the week is out. Uh, money market queue is important today. They come from B. Prasanna of ICICI Bank. Prasanna says uh, the rupee is likely to trade firm, tracking fall in the dollar index as dovish comments from U.S. Fed Chairman Jerome Powell signaled greater flexibility in U.S. monetary policy on account of concerns on slowing growth and financial market volatility. Weber, he adds, upward bias in oil prices following output drop in December by OPEC may keep sharp appreciation of rupee in check. He expects rupee to trade in the range of 69.30 to 70.10 during the week. And for the bond market, he says, despite benign global rates environment, the fear of domestic fiscal slippage on account of a large farm package has blemished the local bond market sentiment. He says also news around tepid direct tax collection along with the shortfall in GST revenue has further added to the woes. He adds the Indian bonds may underperform emerging market peers and he expects the 10-year benchmark bond deal to trade between 738 to 7.52% during this week. <coughs>